being able to have the bragging rights to the last bedlam has to feel good for Oklahoma State. And now that Oklahoma and Texas are out of the Big 12, do we see the rise of the Cowboy? Let's take a look at it in the, in the 2024 season preview. Yeah. The fanatic. But we keep it 100. Keep it real. That's the only way we know how to be. Talking that sports talk. You know what I'm saying? Straight out of South Carolina. Oh, stay. Yeah. It's 64. Yeah. yeah. The F A N A T T I C. The fanatic where we keep it OG. We talking sports, so I call it. Welcome into the Fan Attic, another episode on the Fan Attic Sports Network. I'm your man, Coach I, and this is the Stack Guy. What's up, Stack? Yo, what's going on tonight, Coach? Hey, man, here talking some uh, Cowboy football, man. Listen, we won't get into it, man, and see what their chances, what we think their chances are in the Big 12 this year, man. But before we do, if you're an Oklahoma State fan and you're new to the channel, man, listen, hit the like and subscribe. We talk college football all the time, college football all the college football that's right we talk all the college football we have a saturday night snap count live stream on saturdays 9 p.m it's comprised of content creators from all the power four conferences including our our favorite oklahoma state guy cody from locked on oklahoma state cody is a part of the panel so y'all check that out man and of course man listen if you're going to some of those oklahoma state uh games this year jump out there on seat geek and use fanatic sports promo code you get twenty dollars off your first purchase so if you never use the code you get twenty dollars off first purchase you might as well save money on one of those games if not all of those games man and listen check out the channel memberships not that much dollar 99 you get you get a badge uh member badge you get emojis custom emojis to use member shout outs and to be a part of the discord so we can chop it up talk about college football talk a little trash you know have a little fun with the rest of the crew man so let's jump into this thing how you feeling today stat guy about this oklahoma state before we really get started doing good one shout out i want to give oklahoma state i absolutely hate the color orange but oklahoma <laughs> state in all sports have some of the coolest uniforms there is out there um the orange and black be nice together um even on the screen right now the the orange and white really be popping off so Oklahoma State thank y'all for letting me at least appreciate the color <laughs> orange at some point in my life big facts big facts all right man let's talk about that 2023 season man as we get into 2024 man Oklahoma State like I said earlier made it to the big 12 championship losing two eventual national title uh runner-up Texas uh so um they finished 10 and 4 they started the season kind of question like questionable what I'll call it I don't know how invested some people say Mike Gundy was but when he was invested and showed up they turned it on and got it started they lost a really uh baffling one to South Alabama at Iowa State at UCF Texas uh, uh, of course in the uh, Big 12 championship um Oklahoma State returns, uh, you know, some good players, and we'll get into that a little bit later. I think their biggest win last year, of course, is their the rivalry game, man. They beat Oklahoma, man. Um, they they went out there and did what they had to do. They did get kind of tossed around by UCF, though, at UCF later in the season, man. That was, I want to say it was like 48 to 13 or something like that. It, it just got away from them, and it snowballed and snowballed and snowballed. So, um that 2023 season, man, uh, it had a, it had a slow start, that guy, but they finished kind of strong. Yeah, you know, there were, I mean, there were some people thinking maybe Mike Gundy on the hot seat there <laughs> after the first couple of weeks. Like, what what's going to happen? And I, you know, we, we're big Mike Gundy fans. I think the testament to his coaching is completely changing who they were as an offense, what, four weeks into the year. And just... Right bam, we're just going to run down your throat now. And, um, you know, I, I read an article that said Ollie Gordon went into Mike Gundy's office and said, yo, feed me the ball, and mm -hmm. I'll win some football games. And hey, I think that's kind of what we saw on the screen, you know what I'm saying, yeah. uh, on his way to win and to walk as the best running back in the nation. So not a bad thing to do, apparently, man. So let's get into this year, man, and these returning players, man. You got some info on these returning players? Yeah, first of all, Oklahoma State returns – probably more, maybe more, they might return the most amount of starters in all of college football, for sure in the Big 12. They returned 20 of 22 starters. Ooh, that's so, why should be some high expectations there yeah, in still water. And it, it's 10 on both sides of the ball. Um, obviously, it starts with Ollie, right? 1,700 plus yards last year. 
I believe, 21 touchdowns. Um, so I think the goal for him is New York or bust this year, honestly. I don't know about as far as, like, what his goal is. Obviously, he's probably wanting a Big 12 championship and to make the playoffs, but I think personal goals should definitely be um, New York and be in that Heisman talk. Right, and then they return their quarterback. I want to say it's Alan Bowman. Uh, not to say, you know, he's a Heisman contender, but you you love a returner that has that experience, man. And in this new look playoff, all you got to do is win your conference. You don't necessarily have to be in the top – Five per se, top six, or that uh, what the New Year's six is the you know the 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 top four, then the rest of the six. You just have to win your conference, and with the parity in the Big Twelve, listen, there's about probably in our minds five, maybe six teams that could do that, and Oklahoma State for sure is one of those teams. So all you gotta do is get to the Big Twelve championship and win it, man. And with those with all that returning production, <laughs> listen, if Mike Gundy's locked in, the players are locked in. There, again, there's no OU, no Texas. <laughs> and then on that defensive side of the ball, the two names to watch for, Colin Oliver, Nick Martin, two linebackers. And I think having it be in the linebacker, right, they can help in the front seven. They can help in the coverage. I mean, they can kind of help everywhere instead of it just being a safety or just being a defensive. They're kind of everywhere on the field. Um, and I, I think they're going to lead that defense and be able to shut some people down. If that's the case, man, this 2024 season probably goes like Oklahoma State fans want it to go. Uh, let's look at the 2024 schedule, man. The 2024 schedule, again, you got to make it to the Big 12 championship. And if you win it, you're automatically in. For the Just to be honest, for the Big 12 and the ACC, one of the, one of the conference champion losers is probably going to get in. And I don't think the other one will get in so like either the big 12 conference champion loser gets in or the acc champion conference champion gets in i don't think both of them get in because it is what it is whether right or wrong the big 10 and the sec are going to get the most players at the table and i think that's just how it's going to work out so let's jump into the schedule man and take a look to see what we're thinking for oklahoma state this year all right man so with this schedule I got a couple of games highlighted here. I'll just quickly run through the schedule. You got South Dakota State at home, Arkansas at home, at Tulsa, Utah at home, at Kansas State, West Virginia at home. You get a much-needed bye week at BYU, at Baylor, Arizona State for homecoming, at TCU, then a bye week, then Texas Tech, and then Colorado on the road. So that guy, you know, we always talk about schedule playing a part in how successful your season is, even if you got the coaching and the players. I think just on randomly looking at this, this schedule, this schedule kind of sets up for Oklahoma State to have a pretty good season. So uh, one, some of the games that I highlighted, the orange ones being at home, black and blue in the way. I think that Arkansas game, I think that's just right off the bat, it's just a test. It's just to show you where you are this year, what your mindset is. Uh, you know, you had the South Alabama game early. I don't think everybody was locked in. You definitely need to be locked in when Arkansas comes to town. You got Utah at home. Is Cam Rising going to be healthy or not? And then a tough nose really good Kansas State team. You'll be facing the defense uh, in Kansas State that returns a lot of their production. And then uh, West Virginia traveling out to Stillwater. Can you deal with their quarterback? And then finishing the season at Colorado. At Colorado in November, that late November, who knows what the weather's going to be. But, you know, Colorado used to be in the Big 12 back in the day. So it's not like, uh, you know, the fans are, are – are, uh, unfamiliar with that ter territory the players are <laughs> but not necessarily the uh, fans so let's go win game here we don't know what vegas got oklahoma state as right now um but I'll, what i'll go you got it i was gonna say i'm almost positive vegas had them at like nine and a half if you're an oklahoma state fan get in the comments let us know what vegas is projecting uh, the win total for oklahoma state this year and then we can see how close we come uh, so, of course, you get a point for a win, none for a loss, and then a half for a toss-up. Of course, I'm going to start out, and then these, these first three games, man, South Dakota, Arkansas, at Tulsa, I got them at two and a half, giving a half for that Arkansas game because I think Arkansas, Pittman's job is on the line. 
And if they be, if Arkansas, if Arkansas don't get it together, uh, then this it might be the end of the road for Pittman st starting out. But I'm gonna go ahead and give him a half of that because I think Arkansas is gonna bring some kind of talent in there. Yeah, you would like to think that, but <laughs> give me three and oh during those first three games because Pittman's job is over probably <laughs> by week six or seven anyway. Um, the one, the one kind of iffy. Um, South Dakota State, another one of those FCS schools, man, those Dakota schools be doing some weird stuff in the FCS. They right. got to be locked in week one. Oklahoma State has real opportunity to have a huge season in front of them. Don't don't drop the ball week one. There it is. So I got them at three and then uh, you got them at two and a half. I mean, I got them at two and a half and you got them at three. Yep. Going into the Utah game, Cam Rising's healthy. I think this is definitely going to be a battle of wills. Utah likes to play defense and they're going to need it against that ground ground attack again uh, for Oklahoma State. Uh, I got this as a half. It's at home. I think if Cam Rising's uh, healthy, I think they can go in there and create some issues. So I got it as a half. So I'm at three. I'm giving Oklahoma State the win here. It's at home, um, and I think they're rolling at this point in the season. There it is. So you're at, <clears throat> excuse me, you're at four, and I'm at uh, three and a what three. three? I'm at three. All right, going into that at Kansas State game. I think because that game's on the road, Kansas State is going to be ready for the rush attack. They return almost all, you know, like eighty percent or their production on defense, and then they got to run an attack as well. I think it'll be a good game, but I got Kansas State winning this game, so I, I got this uh, as a loss. So I'm still at three. And I had this as a toss up, so give me the half. Um, but I think that um, I really would love for College Game Day to be in Manhattan that week. Mm, that would be nice. So we got West Virginia coming into the house. I did have this game as one circle, but I think Oklahoma State will have it circled as well. I think Oklahoma State is going to be too much on the ground for them. I got them as a win here. I got them at four and a half. I got them as a win here to have them at five and a half. All right. They get a bye week. I think they go to BYU and I think they win. Unless this game was at night and crazy things happen at night in Provo. Uh, I got them as, as a win right here and I got them at five and a half. Yeah, I think they just have too much for BYU, so I got them for the win. And the next three games, I got them winning all of those games. I think they're just better than those teams, uh, to be honest with you. I know at TCU may cause a little issues, but I got them at eight and a half coming out of the TCU game. And I have them at nine and a half coming out of the TCU game. Then they finished the season with Texas Tech and at Colorado. I think they... I think Texas, I think Texas Tech may be something is like if there's a trap game, I'm calling it at Texas Tech. They're coming off a bye week, but then I think because of the media, they'll be, be looking forward to that Colorado game and possibly could overlook Texas Tech. I'm gonna give them a half here. It's at home. I think they're better than Texas Tech, but just because of the, the how it falls, I think it, it may be like that. So I got them here at uh what is that? Uh I had them at Five and a half, three, eight and a half. That's nine. Yeah, so I have them nine and a half going into that Texas Tech game. And everything they want this season is right in front of them with two weeks to go. I think they put the blinders on and get the job done. I have them getting the win over Texas Tech. All right, so you got them at, at 10 and I got them at nine. And I got them I got at, them at uh, 10 and a half. You got them at 10 and a half. I got them at nine and a half going into the Colorado game. Uh, the Colorado game, I think, is going to be a good one. Again, one of these uh, battles of uh, opposites where you got <laughs> you got one of the best passes in the nation on one side in Colorado and one of the best runners in the nation in Ollie Gordon on the other side for Oklahoma State. So I give them a half here. Like I say, it's um, – it's going to be a good game, I think, if if injuries don't play a part. And uh, I just I give Oklahoma State a half here. So I got them finishing the season at 10 wins. And I gave them the win against Colorado. I think they're just too much. I have them finishing at 11 and a half, um, winning the Big 12 regular season championship and getting a rematch with Kansas State um, for the Big 12 championship. <laughs> Oklahoma State fans, get in the comments. Let us know what you think. Ceiling what you think the lowest uh, acceptable amount of wins is this year. And uh, I'm sorry, the ceiling, let me reverse that. <laughs> it's the floor, what the amount of, uh, lowest amount of acceptable wins here and the ceiling, what you think the highest potential for this team is this year. Let us know what games you're looking forward to and what players you think are key players for the season, man. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'm the Stat Guy, Coach I, we out. Peace.
out the pound, let's go eat. Turn on the fan at it, yeah. let's have a debate. Yeah. Who really hold down the southeast from state to state? What team hungry gonna eat everything up off they plate?